The future of TV. It will be disruptive. Outside the box. On the cutting edge of the cutting edge. Inspired by synergy and uh, uh, innovation. Excuse me? Yes? Hi. I'm sorry to interrupt. I just... I think the future of TV would just, uh, you know, combine your favorite things. Like live TV, on-demand titles, and access to Netflix and HBO in one place, you know? With like a voice remote that lets you find everything easily. Mm. I mean, that's what AT&T did. Who invited you into my commercial? Oh, I'm sorry. I let myself in. Yeah, the door was unlocked. Find the things you love with a single voice command. Introducing AT&T TV. That's televisionary. Visit att.com slash TV. Available in select areas. Requires a high-speed internet. Recommend minimum 8 megabits per second per stream for optimal viewing. Limit three concurrent AT&T streams. Netflix and HBO subscriptions required. Restrictions apply. Huge hour about to come your way. The $1,000 minute coming up in about 13 minutes. Your chance to win $1,000 cold cake right here with Bernie and Sid. And, of course, you've got a very esteemed guest in studio, which Bernie will introduce to you in just a couple of seconds. I do want to send a quick shout-out to a guy that was my intern many, many, many years ago down in South Florida that is now one of the major stars, major stars at ESPN. He now works out of Los Angeles after many years up in Bristol, Connecticut. A buddy of mine from WQAM down in Miami, the great George Sedano. In from Los Angeles, vacationing for a couple of days with his family, Bernie, and listening to Bernie and Sid here on Talk Radio 77 WABC. So a big shout out and a healthy amount of love to my buddy George Sedano listening from Los Angeles. Hello, John. And uh, speaking of John, we have, and this song is for you, John Bachelor, the Mills Brothers Glowworm. You love this, right? Good, good morning, gentlemen. It's good, good stuff. Morning. Anyway, good the, this is the, how uh, the John Bachelor <laughs> show is described at Westwood One. The John Bachelor show is a breaking news program that focuses on global politics, economics, war fighting, hard sciences, space exploration, literature, and whimsy. And it can be heard here on 77 WABC from 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. in the morning. And it is a very, very eminently edifying and entertaining show. Uh, John Bachelor, good morning to you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. A pleasure. So listen, let's get right to it. Yes. Uh, the pre- I know you're psyched, though. You're jacked about this whole Greenland thing. The president actually tweeted last night in response to the Danish prime minister, the female, who said, listen, we're not selling Denmark, we're not selling Greenland, excuse me, to you. He says, thanks for that information. You saved us a lot of money. We're not going to go. And so uh, maybe we'll see you in the future sometime soon. Uh, the Prime Minister of Denmark, Fredriksson is her name, yes. spoke without consulting the people of Greenland, who are mostly Inuit. I'm certain they'll be eager to hear the President's offer. This is a piece of North America with great promise, but its economy is based entirely on fishing and selling to North America. In the 21st century, Europe is tolerating a monarch and a colony of a monarch. That's the sort of thing that caused the disruptions of the Second World War. Right. Colonies exactly. are not acceptable governance. No, it's not. The it's president a, wants to make them a deal. They can be part of the United States. They can be independent. It's a good deal for the Inuit. And perhaps Copenhagen might pay attention to the people who live there rather than issuing remarks. And I note the prime minister used the word absurd. Uh, that is the judgment of a theater critic, not of a, le- a head of state. Right. So and, perhaps and the prime minister wants to reload. She should. They're losing $700 million a year, from what I understand. And by the way, didn't we buy the Virgin Islands from uh, Denmark in 1914 we or something We have like made that? a lot of good deals for European monarchs. Yes. And one of them, George III, was relieved of the colonies some several hundred years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure we're happy to relieve Denmark of its colonies. Well, you know, they, they say that it's not for sale and... Uh, it may have been The Godfather. I forget what famous movie it was. But we were told that, I mean, I'm Wall Street maybe with Gordon Gecko. Fact is, everything's for sale. Yes, so my yes, question yes, to you is, yes. John, right? I mean, so the question is, would you overpay? I don't know what, um, what countries are going for these days. <laughs> but would you overpay for Greenland if you were President Trump just to acquire it? There's a deal to make. We give them liberty and they give us allegiance. That's the deal. What's liberty worth? Right now, they are subjects of an absolute monarch. 
Yeah. How antique is that? From a different yeah. continent. Yeah, Marguerite the Second. Who ever heard of Marguerite the Second <laughs> ruling a piece of North America? Uh, Look, well, un- but unlike England, where the monarchy is just a, it's for show. I mean, yes, Queen Elizabeth will sign every document once the prime minister and the actual government uh, goes through it. In Greenland, the monarchy actually does run the country, right? It, that's- uh, well, they call her. Uh, I reload, Margreta. My pronunciation. Copenhagen, excuse me, but Margreta II is a non-player, except for the fact she's an absolute monarch. Yeah. The people of Greenland live under, uh, no one lives under an absolute monarch in North America, to my knowledge. No, no, uh, no. In addition, let's, let's, let's say that the president wants to put this in play. Good for him. Good for the right, people. Right, they made him out to be a buffoon but about But let it, but... us hear from the people of Greenland. Do you hear the prime minister this morning making this absurd remark? Do you hear consultation with the people who live there? I didn't hear no, any. nothing. She popped off, and the president canceled the dinner because she was rude. That's why we had the Boston Tea Party. No representation, uh, no taxation without representation. For Excellent. Guys. And I'm, I'm going to credit you, Bernie, for introducing a lesson that perhaps... Prime Minister Fredrickson skipped in the fifth grade. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Living under an absolute monarch, there'd be no reason to consult governance. The damn queen is ignorant, for God's sake. Let's also Aren't speak of the fact that Greenland has great promise yes. in North America because of the opening of the sea lanes. You mentioned this earlier. And That's right. If, uh, if global warming is true, if it's going to happen... We're going to have one hell of a sea lane up there north of Greenland. And we could get into a bidding contest because I'm certain Ottawa's in play here. I mean, the Canadians always have reason for new mineral resources. Greenland has a lot of resources. Yes. It has a lot of research going on. The, uh, my, my major case is that we just saw an example of European absolutism right in front of us. And it's packaged this morning at the Wall Street Journal as if the president was overreaching and Europe has defended itself from the aggressor. Well, the fact is, we have been liberating Europe for several hundred years. We can all imagine what Europe would look like without the uh, yeah. agency of sure. the United States yeah. for the speaking, 20th century. Speaking yes. Russian or German. Yeah. So let us hear from the Inuits who mostly dominate Greenland. And if they say we're not interested in making a deal with the United States that would be much better and give them independence, then we'll wait. Fair oh, enough. I like it. Let's get to the other big story today, which is President Trump being accused of saying something yesterday that the Democrats deem anti-Semitic. Right. Uh, and I did tweet as a proud Jew. I thought Donald Trump was right on the money. He was spot on. I don't know how any Jew uh, can vote Democrat. And it's, it goes above and beyond for me, these congresswomen who are clearly anti-Semites. It's the other Jews that don't come out and condemn these people, whether it's Max Rose or Schumer or Engel or Lowy. The list goes on and on. There's tons of Jews who allow these ladies to say and do these things and don't say it damn thing about it so don't tell me it's just two people inside this party it's discipline and the question is where is the discipline for the democrats when steve king stepped out of line and made unacceptable remarks the republican party kevin mccarthy ex- exited steve king he no longer has any committee assignments in the congress at all that is available to steny hoyer the majority leader of the democratic caucus but they're, but they're saying that uh, president trump should have stepped in and made sure he no longer had a role at all in politics that taking him off the committee wasn't enough i first want to see nancy pelosi and steny hoyer exercise their authority and make it certain to the american people that Tlaib, Tlaib's remarks are unacceptable conduct Omar's remarks are those of a provocateur, and we will not empower them in any fashion to be representatives of the people of the United States. That's available right now. I asked this question the other night to a colleague who's extremely well informed, and the response I got, because I said, Steny Hoyer's a good guy. What the heck is going on here? He doesn't tolerate this rem- these remarks in his own living room. And the uh, response I got back was, the Democrats are afraid of them. They're anxious about how it will be viewed if they punish people who are out of line because they're playing identity politics. Yeah, it's really, it's, it's disgusting. I mean, I played a clip yesterday of Schumer and Pelosi not more than a year ago claiming that the BDS movement is blatant anti-Semitism. Which, which it is. And today, right, it is. Anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. 
And that's what these two ladies are espousing. These two, the, the, these uh, members of the squad, which I call the uh, ISIS Pride Brigade. That's what they're espousing. And these the Democrats, uh, like Sid said, spineless, unbelievably spineless. It, it is surprising. And I, ha- I know a number of the Democratic members. Uh, and it's a puzzle to me what is holding them back. Individually, individually, they could say, well, I don't know what the caucus is going to do, but this is my opinion of these remarks by the representative from Michigan, the representative from Minnesota. A gentleman, we're dealing with provocateurs whose language is being used overseas in other languages to support hate speech and worse provocations. Israel is suffering border incursions routinely now by, by hotheads who are trained by our enemies. And Tlaib and Omar are supporting them with their rhetoric. Yeah, it really is disgusting. They're under siege. Uh, John Batchelor, listen, uh, sadly, we're out of time. I, I mean, know, it goes too goes fast. So fast. Well, it's because we're about to launch the uh, Take Back Greenland movement. <laughs> <laughs> you like this uh, God, Greenland story. Free, free, free Greenland. Uh, Greenland, we're coming. You know, <laughs> Lafayette, we are here. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Inuit, we are here. We should, we should make Mexico pay for it, too. Yes, and the president doesn't like uh, invasions. Uh, this is si- simply a money deal. We can do it in uh, By the way, I, and I, I looked it up. We did buy the Virgin Islands from uh, Denmark in 1970. For $25 million in gold. Very nice. Very yeah, nice. That and, actually happened. And Denmark can make a deal. You've only had it since 1814, and I'm certain the people of Denmark don't even know that they have it. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. un- unaware. Know. They're yeah. paying for it, but they don't know. Hey, hey, Trump, John- will, Trump will get back into the casino business. And build a beautiful casino right there in Greenland. What do you think? I think that it's a good idea for <laughs> Greenland to use all of the tools available for, uh, for, for uh, aggrandizement. And one of them is a casino. And the, the indigenous <laughs> people like here can run the casino. I mean, this is a great deal for everybody. Well, make them a deal they can't refuse. <laughs> John Batchelor is on at 9 o'clock great tonight, job. folks. 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. He's you. brilliant. He really is. He's erudite. He wears a bow tie. you got to see this man. He's so distinguished. It makes me and said, I like to make me I, feel. I have fun with you guys. You're yeah, the you're best. Great. Yes. We do love you too. Yes. Thank you. And, and uh, I know you're, you're keeping up with the baseball stuff as well. Folks, your chance to win $1,000 is coming up right now. Flood these phone lines 1 800 848 WABC, 1 800 848 Get 10 in a row correct. We'll give you $1,000. The $1,000 minute with Bernie and Sid on the other side.